Wow, talk about poor choice for relaxing late music. Ah, that's more like it. On with the show! Welcome back to Creatures, Towers, and Crafting. Today I'm in the toy department of the local Dollar Tree. I'm looking at a few toys here for crafting slash kit bashing ideas. If you're not aware, dollar stores, flea markets, yard sales are great places to find crafting material. Let's see what we can find today and get this crafting project underway. And here's our haul from the Dollar Tree. First of all, we have a fire rescue truck that does light up. We have a two-pack of cars and a firefighter playset. I kind of like this because it comes with a vehicle. And it also has a few signs in it as well. So... I'm going to probably focus on the cars, maybe do some derelict cars, um, rust effects, and we'll just see what we can come up with. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to take this hair dryer, and we have some decals on the cars that need to be removed. And what I'm going to do is just simply cut this on, and we're just going to start applying some heat. If you're doing this at home, kids, uh, maybe get a parent to supervise. Uh, this can get hot, and you can burn yourself. And we should be able to peel this off now. It should come off pretty easy. There we go. Now you may have a little bit of residue still left over. That's fine. Uh, we can take some nail polish and we can also wash it off using some dome detergent. And here we are. I'm just taking this vehicle and you see I've removed the decals. We're going to give this a nice rinse. I'm using some hot water and of course some detergent. We want to just give this a nice bath and then we'll let it dry. I'm going to start taking apart the cars like so. This should be pretty simple. I don't think there was any glue used on this. I just kind of snapped it apart. And we'll even take this bumper off here. It's right here. I think I might have to come back to that. And we'll do the same thing with the car. And the van will probably, we're not going to do anything with it. We'll probably leave it like it is. And we'll just do a nice paint job on it. All right, here we have all the cars pulled apart. I've even snapped some of the tires off. I used a wire cable tool here to do that. And I've also cut off some foam core bases. Uh, if you don't have foam core, you can use cardboard or MDF, whatever you, you know suits your fancy. And I'm just kind of cutting these so that whenever I put them on the board, they'll kind of mend together. Uh, you don't have to do that. That's just kind of the way I want to do things. I'm also going to start putting these on and arranging them just to see how they best fit. Next, we're going to take some polyform air dry modeling clay. I'm just going to grab a piece of this and I'm going to form it to the foam core base, kind of like so. And of course, we're going to flatten that out. And to get this to stick to the foam core, what we're going to use is a little bit of carpenter glue. Uh, this is also known as wood glue. You can use uh, white glue uh, or any other glue that you might have. We're going to take the clay and put that over the glue. And now we're going to take the car and we're just going to put this into the clay and get an impression. This is not going to stay in the clay. We're actually going to remove this and all the tires and allow the base and the clay to dry separately. Now we're going to move on to priming the models. And I'm going to use a Rust-Oleum brown for this. And here's our model once the primer has dried. Notice I've put a burnt sienna to this. And what I'm going to use is a acrylic thinner in this application. What we want to do is thin this down. This is a craft paint. Also, my next step is to apply an orange, and you could use maybe a Rizzo Rust for this. If you want to use the acrylic thinner, I would use maybe something like a Troll Slayer orange, or if you have a craft paint that's orange, like Apple Barrel or something like that, that would be perfect. And here we have the models with the orange paint applied. I did use an airbrush on the car, and I used a regular paint brush on the Humvee. I just used light coats and build up. What we're going to do next is I'm going to explore three different chipping methods. Now there are plenty other chipping methods out there, uh, but I thought that you guys might find it interesting uh, to follow along with the results of each one. So for our first method, what we're going to do is take a little bit of white PLA glue and we're just going to take our brush and just start dabbing it on like so. I may be going a little too thick. Um, what I would suggest is try to thin this out a little bit. You might even use a spray bottle if you like and just lightly mist it. 
Next we're going to take some fine sand. You could use playground sand maybe. And we're just going to get a pinch of this and just start sprinkling it on like so. We're going to do this all over the car. We're going to give it about 30-40 minutes to dry. And when we're done, we should have something that looks like this. Once our glue has had a chance to dry, we're going to go ahead and prime this. In this case, I use an Ultramarine Blue by Army Painter. We're going to allow that primer a good hour or two to set up. And then we're going to start to remove the sand and glue. To do this, I'm going to use some fresh water. And I'm just going to take a paintbrush. And we're just going to dip some water onto the brush and start applying this onto the car. What we're going to do is allow this to soak in. It's going to start to loosen up that glue and that sand and then we're just going to take a toothbrush or anything with a light bristle and we're just going to start scrubbing to remove the excess. Now for our second method we'll be using what is called the salt masking technique. To do this I'm going to use a little hairspray. If you don't have hairspray you might be able to use water. I'm going to go ahead and saturate the model Guys, forgive me, the can is a little low, so I'm trying to shake it out as much as I can. Just making sure I have a good coverage on the model. There we go. And now we're going to take some salt. I'm just going to start sprinkling that onto the model. When doing this technique, I tend to apply more salt to the top of the vehicle and the reason why is, is you're going to have more exposure to the sun and the elements, so you're going to see more damage there. Next, moving along really fast, we're going to prime the model using a Army Painter Army Green. Then we're going to go ahead and start to apply the same method of removing the salt and the hairspray that we used earlier. We're just taking that water and the brush. And here's what we come out with. Uh, note, I did put a Agras Earthshade brown wash on this and also a sepia wash just to kind of tie things in. Uh, it looks kind of good, uh, but we're not finished with it yet. And now for our final and third chipping method, we're gonna use a chipping medium by Vallejo Paints. And to apply this, I'm gonna use an airbrush gun. Now guys, I am a novice at airbrushing. Uh, so you're gonna you're in for a treat to watch me do this now if you don't have an airbrush you can also use a sponge I would just suggest that you lightly apply it uh, what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna start to make sure the airbrush has got good flow and I'm just going to lightly spray this onto the surface of the model there we go we want to make sure we want to Stay away from the windows as much as possible. And we'll continue to do this. And guys, you can apply one coat and then go over it again. So try not to apply this very heavily. So here we have the model and there's a couple of ways of removing this. The first method, uh, which is probably the most uh, gentle method to do, is just to take a brush with some water and just go over it like so. Focus in for you guys to get a better view. And the second method is probably to take a stiff brush and just kind of stab into it. And you can also take uh, like maybe a toothpick. Here I have a coffee stir and make scratch marks if you want. This stuff is very forgiving. And here's our model once we're done. Now we're going to go ahead and start basing everything out. And of course we're going to start with the Mod Podge. And that's just going to add protection to the clay. And then we're going to move on to our Earth Vallejo Texture Paint. For the vehicles what we're going to do is add a wash. I'm going to use an Agress Earthshade and a Sepia. Then we're going to go ahead and move on to our flocking, our rust effects, and we're also going to do our pigment dusting as we've done previously in other videos. Lastly, for our van, I just applied some accent highlights to the windows, some light dusting, and of course, the rust effects and painted the lights. Let's see what this looks like on the table.
And guys, here we have our final project. Final thoughts on this. I had a really good time and I learned a lot for very low cost. The cars themselves cost me about $3.21. The chip and medium was about $6 and some change, but that's a big bottle and I can use it for tons of projects. I would advise anyone that's getting into crafting or kit bashing, go ahead and try this. Go pick yourself up some cheap toys at the dollar store and try these weathering techniques and these chipping techniques. As always, I'll leave you guys with a nice video at the end. Hey, you're awesome. Thanks for tuning in to my channel. I greatly appreciate your viewership. If you haven't already, consider subscribing. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. More importantly, maybe share this with someone that might like this type of video. Like maybe your friends, your family, fellow mutants. I don't know. Take a stab at it. Anyways, a lot of turmoil in the world. I hope this video gave you a little respite from it all. We'll see you next week. Stay safe.